Okay, class, welcome. We're going to be talking about limits today. And limits is really the first part of, of the calculus course. What we've been doing up till now has been sort of preliminary for that. Uh, and here we have a graph. Suppose you have this graph of this function, and they give you this function here, x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2, and x cannot equal 2. And I hope everybody understands why x cannot equal 2. But if you graph this function, this is what the graph of the function looks like, and scale it appropriately. So what I want you to do is to put this equation in your calculator, and then I want you to fill out this table. Does everybody know how to do that? Anybody not know how to do that? You know how to set the four decimal places? Yes. I, you want me to show you that? Yeah, show you. Okay, I'll be happy to show you. So we go here to mode, and then you see here where it says float. You can go over here to four. And I think on your version of the calculator, you have a similar thing, don't you? You do that? Okay. And then you go here, and you can enter the function. You press second, up here's alpha, y equals enter. And here you put x cubed. So x cubed. Is it minus 8? over x minus 2. And so that's what you have. And you can go to the table view. If you go to second table, you can see where x equals 2 that you have an error. One thing you can do for this, I will show you. Have you ever, in table set, you can set it up a certain way. Okay? Have you ever used table set? Let me show you. Go to second window, and what you do is you go down here to where it says independent, and you choose ask. Okay? Now you get out of here to the table view, and now you can enter whatever x values you want. So enter the x values, and what are the x values? 1.75. One point nine nine. One point nine nine. And so on and then so forth. And and so you just enter those your answers in there. That'd be eleven point four. So I hope you can help me out a little bit on this, since I since I'm right here. What is going to be 1.999? What is that going to be? 11. Point what? Uh, 11.994. Okay, and on the other side, for 201, is it going to be 12.006. And then 12.06. And then 12.61. And then this one here is going to be 563, okay. All right. So, and I don't know what this one's going to be 10 point something. I don't know. 10 point. Okay, so anyway, we've completed our chart, right? So, c 
can you see that as you're approaching 2, as x approaches 2, what is f of x approaching? 1. That doesn't look like... No, what is it approaching? 12. Approaching 12, right? So you can see from the table that 12 seems to be what is being approached. And if you graphed a function, if you went ahead and divided this out, what would you get? No. If you divide this out, you get x squared, x cubed, x squared x in negative 8 and then you put it by 2. This is synthetic division. Did we do that last year? Yes we did. So come down here we get 1 x squared plus 2x plus 4 x squared plus 2x plus 4, right? If you graphed x squared plus 2x plus 4, you're going to see the same curve, but you're not going to have the, the discontinuity here. You can try that in the calculator if you want. But here we are. It should be obvious, and I already, Aaron already mentioned this, right? We come closer and closer to 12. And then the notation for this, we say the limit of f of x as f approaches 2 is 12, and this is written in this notation right here. Do you remember that notation, the limit notation from last year? A little bit. We talked about n behavior. But what we did for n behavior is we were talking about the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. Here in calculus, we're looking at the limit most of the time as x approaches a certain number. Remember yesterday the calculus roller coaster? Mm -hmm. We were interested in focusing in the, the tangent, the, the slope of the tangent line at that one point. And so we're interested in the limiting process looking microscopically back at a single number. And the informal definition is what is happening to y as x gets closer to a certain number. Okay, in order for a limit to exist, we must be approaching the same y value as we approach some value from either the left side or the right side. And so we notice here, looking back at our table, that we seem to be approaching 12 from the left side and also we approach 12 from the right side. So 12 is what we're zeroed in on, but do we ever actually hit 12 according to this function here? No, we do not. Because we have, what do we call this thing right here where the function does not exist? Discontinuity. We call this a discontinuity. <laughs> exactly, that's why, that's why I turned around, of course. And, and what kind of discontinuity do we, do we call it? Point. A, a point discontinuity. Okay. Which... You're just cheating off the shirt. <laughs> no. Well, I gave you... A, well, Hannah, you had an opportunity to cheat off my shirt, too. Okay, well, if he didn't answer so fast, we'd be gone. Well, All right. uh, Shut up, Aaron. Shirt that has, like, test on. Uh, it, it, it could happen. You know what happens if you wear the... Uh, if, if, if you wore a unit circle shirt, that could actually, t-shirt, that could actually help you. Or, or what if you had it to, tattooed on a forearm? Say, you had, like a tattoo of it you had it tattooed on a forearm, okay. What, like. <laughs> but, but the unit circle is pretty easy, right? With the hand trick and all that, you'd be able to figure out what that is. Four. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Aaron. Our viewers want to know. <laughs> okay. Hey, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Maddie. Okay. Uh, and what we do, the notation for this, 
we would write this one up here for 12, limit as x approaches 12, or x approaches 2, excuse me, 2 from the left side of f of x, and limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of f of x. Okay, so your approach, this little negative sign here means you're approaching from the left. This one here, x approaches 2 plus, and when both of these are the same, then you have the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. So you see these different notations, this one, this one, and this one. And when these two limits here are the same, in this case they are both 12, we know that the limit exists and is also 12. Okay? Now, just as a thought experiment, we're going back to our table. And let's say instead of this, let's just say we had f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 4. Okay, let's say we had this quadratic trinomial. Would this table look the same? Except for the 2. Yeah, except for this. So the only difference would be this would be 2 right here. Okay, now coming back here would the limits still be the same here. They'd be exactly the same. Okay. The only thing is, the only difference is, is that f of f of 2 exists for, for f of x equals x squared plus, was it 2x plus 4? Is that what it was? Yeah. It exists. For this one here, f of 2 does not exist. Okay. So that would be the distinction. And then we're going to look at here graphically what this looks like. I'm going to go over some a few examples with you. Here you have example 1, and you have a function. This function is f of x. All these are f of x. And the, the print is kind of small on these, but here's what this says. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left, because that's a negative sign of f of x, is what is the limit as we approach 1 from the left? It's, like one. it's 1, right? Now, here's a, here's a key distinction. Does f of 1 have to actually exist? No, it does not. It has to approach. It has to approach infinitesimally closely. Okay, so that's one. What is the limit as x approaches one from the right side of f of x? Two. And so the limit as x approaches one of f of x is what? Well, it does not exist. And actually what it is, it does, it, see equals is a verb, right? So it is not equals does not exist, it cross out the equal sign, so we only have one verb now. It does not exist. Okay? Because in, in a sentence we usually only have one action verb, right? And that's the case here. What is f of 1 equal? 2. f of 1 equals 2. We see this filled in, so f of 1 equals 2. And then for example 2, <coughs> we have this drawing here, and, and it's a little, I think these are supposed to be holes here above and below, and I think the function is supposed to be here. So limit as x approaches 1 from the left side is? What is, what is that equal here? Negative 
negative 1, or it could be negative 1.2. We'll just say negative 1. We'll assume the graphics are off. As x approaches 1 from the right side, looks like about 1. What is the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? Again, does not exist. And f of 1 equals 0. Just gets filled in here. Okay? <clears throat> Let's go on here. The next exercise set. Okay, I want you to, to, to do these, examples 3 and 4. And I'll, I'll go over them pretty quickly after the fact. Okay, let's go over these pretty quickly. Okay, limit as x approaches 1 from the left side looks 1, right? As x approaches 1 from the right side, also 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is? one because this this has to equal this right and so whatever that number is if both these are equal that's that what is f of one equal to does not exist I don't see any any value so again it doesn't equal does not exist it does not exist and this one here is exactly the same except what There's a, there's a yeah so so we have negative 2 here, but everything else is the same, right? So the limit is still 1. Limit is still 1, okay? And, and what would happen in this case if this was filled in here? What would the limit be? It's still be 1. Limit would still be 1, but f of 1 would be 1 also, okay? So just some things. Okay, and this one here. These two here. Okay, for example 5, I'm looking at as x approaches 0 from the left side, it looks to me like 1. Is that right? 
And as x approaches zero from the right side, I'm also getting one. And since the left side and right side are one, we have this, the limit is one, and f of zero looks like it is also one. And now, for this one here, was this, that was quite a bit, example six is quite a bit different, isn't it? What is the limit as x approaches two from the left side? Infinity. It looks like it's infinity, right? Or, actually you could say it as uh, the, it does not exist toward positive infinity. You can say it that way too. And what about as we approach two from the right side? Yes, yeah, so it'll be like negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches 2 does what? Does not exist. And f of 2 equals, we don't see anything here, right? f of 2 does not exist. Now I do want to caution you about something because you could have an asymptote like this where from one side it's going like this, and from the other side it's going like this. Okay? So you could see that. If you see something like that, what example is that, Aaron? Uh, 7 and 8. Example 7 and 8. So we're going we're gonna to cover that later. Let's see, we have, let's see our time. So 7 and 8. So here's an example. As x approaches negative 2 from the left, we have infinity. As x approaches 2 from the right, we have infinity. What is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x? Infinity. Well, it actually, actually it is, it actually does not exist because what's happening is it's not the limit does not exist. Okay. Oh, because it just keeps lying. Yeah. It, the limit does not exist because they do not approach one another. So we're, we're, we get a little stickly in the language about it, but that's so. And f of negative 2 also does not exist. And here we have the same thing except f of negative 2 is 0. Okay, everything else is the same. Uh, and let's see here. Okay, so that'll be that'll take care of us. We'll be talking about comparing graphically and analytically probably tomorrow. We'll do that. Okay. All right, so that's it. Thank you for participating in class today.